Hi everyone, Jitin sir here. I believe my previous lectures might have helped you in clearing your concepts very well. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about bouncing of balls. That means, if you release a ball from a particular height, you might have observed that it bounces and does not come to the come back comes back to the same height. Okay, so we are going to find a relation that. Once you release ball from height h, okay, after first bounce, what will be its height? If you are allowing the ball to bounce continuously, after second bounce, what will be its height? After third bounce, and then so on till after nth bounce. This video, this concept will be having two parts. The in the first part, I'll be explaining only about velocity. Okay, listen very carefully. Only about velocity. That means what will be the relation? Of velocity just before the bounce and just after the bounce. Okay, so after first bounce, you will understand that what will be the new velocity after first bounce. Similarly, after second bounce and similarly after n bounces, what will be the final velocities? Okay, see. Let's proceed with the video now. See, guys, for demonstration purpose, I have taken a ball. I am releasing this ball from a particular height. This is the table where it is supposed to bounce. Let us see what is going to happen. Uh, is the height really going to decrease or not? Let us see. Since it is difficult for a human brain to understand this relation in normal motion, let us try to analyze the same scenario in slow motion. Let us consider that the ball was released from a height h. After releasing, its velocity will increase from 0 to a particular value. Let's say u1 be the velocity just before it hits the surface and v1 be the velocity just after it comes out of surface. So let us learn the technicalities of the bounce. So first, as I've already explained, I'll be explaining you about the velocity. Let us assume that I'm releasing the ball from a particular height. Okay, so I'll be releasing the ball. Let me say this is this is the ground. This is at a height. Maybe I'll call this height as h1 or maybe some or maybe h I'll call it as. I'm dropping it. That means the initial velocity at this position will be equal to zero. Okay. Now, let us speak about the velocity just before it bounces. So let me call this velocity just before the bounce as maybe u1. Okay. And after bounce, there will be some velocity. Let me call that velocity as v1. I believe I'm pretty clear right now. Okay. So this is this is the first bounce which is happening. Velocity just before the first bounce is u1 and velocity just after the first bounce is v1. Let me consider that it will be going back to a particular height. Maybe I will call this height as h1. Now, coming back. Before proceeding any further, you must know what is the formula for coefficient of restitution. Coefficient of restitution is denoted by e and it is generally expressed as v1 minus v2 upon u2 minus u1 where 1 is a body and 2 is another body. That means it is relative velocity, relative final velocity upon relative initial velocity with a negative sign. That's why 1 uh, on the numerator, if I'm having 1 minus 2 on the denominator, I'll be having 2 minus 1. So let us consider in this case, earth is body number 2 and uh, this ball is body number 1. So considering that, I can easily clear it out that this v1 will stay as v1 since it is going upward, I'll keep it as v1 minus v2 is earth. So what do you think? What can be the final velocity of earth? Obviously, it is understood that earth's velocity is going to be 0 before and after bounce as well. So I'll write instead of v2, I'll be writing 0. Now u2, again 2 is earth. Since 2 is earth, initial velocity of earth is again 2 minus, minus is formula is minus u1. Since u1 is coming down, I'll write u1 as minus u1. So this will give me the expression as v1 upon u1. Finally, v1 will be equal to e times u1. This is your velocity of ball just after first bounce. Now, speaking about first bounce, now if we try to think further, what about the bounce after that? So due to symmetry, I can say that, you know, if the velocity of the body is starting from this particular position with a velocity of v1, it will go to a maximum height h1 and then definitely it will come back. And at this particular position, when it will be coming back, I am tracing that position over here. When it will be coming back at this particular position, the velocity will be v1. So what am I trying to say? This is the velocity just before second bounce. 
and after the second bounce let me say this is the velocity just after second bounce so just now we have proved that after first bounce velocity just before bounce multiplied by e that is coefficient of restitution will give you velocity just after the bounce so applying the same logic over here in the second bounce i can express this term as like this v2 velocity after bounce will be e times velocity before times uh, before bounce that means v2 will be equal to e times velocity before bounce in this case it is v1 but we have already proved that v1 is equal to e times u1 okay that means instead of the uh, this will be e instead of v i'll write e times u1 that will give me e square times u1 you might have noticed one thing this was first bounce when we had first bounce we had e raised to 1 when we have second bounce we have e raised to 2 similarly when we will go for the third bounce i'll be getting v3 is equal to e raised to 3 u1 and for the fourth bounce i'll be getting v4 is equal to e raised to 4 u1 and so on that means after n bounces the velocity of the ball coming up will be equal to e raised to n times u1 So this expression will give you what is the final velocity after nth bounce. Similarly, I'll express, uh, I'll give you the expression for height as well. Okay. Now coming back, coming to the height. <coughs> Speaking about height, uh, you can see that the initially the height, uh, the drop was h. Okay, height from where it was dropped was h, uh, due to which it had got velocity u1. Now according to law of conservation of energy, here you can equate kind the loss of kinetic energy equal to the gain in uh, the sorry the loss in potential energy can be equated with the gain in kinetic energy so the gain in kinetic energy in this case it is half m u1 square will be equal to loss in potential energy is mgh when you'll solve this expression you will be getting u1 is equal to root of 2gh that means this velocity is corresponding to the height it is directly proportional to the height with this expression applying that expression over here here i'll be getting in the first case okay so e e is kept as it is okay now instead of u1 i'll be writing root of 2gh root of 2gh and instead of v1 over here again v1 and h1 is again related with the same concept of law, uh, loss in this case it is loss of kinetic energy will be equal to gain in potential energy again you have to equate the same expression again you'll be getting similar expression that means v1 can be equated as root of 2 times g into that particular height here the height is termed as h1 that is height after first bounce so when you will do certain cancellations and here you'll be getting h1 is equal to e square h so this will be the height after first bounce. Now, since we know what is the velocity after nth bounce, again, you have to apply the same logic over here. Now, <clears throat> again, Vn can be uh, written as root of 2 ghn will be equal to e raised to n. And instead of u1, I'll be substituting this expression root of root of 2 gh. 2g 2g gets cancelled inside the square root you square overall terms hn will be equal to e raised to 2n h i'll put it in bracket in order to avoid the confusions so these expressions will give you what will be the velocity after first bounce or what will be the velocity after nth bounces and similarly what will be the height of the first bounce what will be the height after n bounces so from here you can understand that the velocity never becomes zero okay so if it was an ideal condition the velocity would have never become zero but since we have air resistance but you'll see that in practical cases it becomes zero after a particular point that's because of air resistance and so many different different factors which are available on practical scenarios but on ideal cases yes it is not supposed to be zero so i hope in th this lecture was very fruitful for you in this lecture i have explained what is the relation of velocity and height after any number of bounces thanks a lot see you next time Bye bye